I had been playing with a, a band prior and I had just picked, bought a pedal steel and was trying to learn it. And James saw that and about six months later, he, I was, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was playing a gig and he came up and he said, would you like to play with me and put a band together? And I said, well, okay, but basically who are you? Because <laughs> I didn't really know. At the time, I had a part-time job at a music store in Ottawa. And this is 1971, yeah, 71, and uh, we got to rehearse in the back of the store. So we went through a bunch of different people, like Rich Richie Grand, who used to be the drummer for the Minor Birds, uh, a whole lot of different people we tried, and it, it never worked, it never gelled. Then all of a sudden we thought of uh, a band called Jumbo, and they were breaking up, and Gibby LaCasse was the drummer, uh, Dave Osmond was the, the guitar player, and Chuck Bergeron was the bass player. So we just took the three of them, and along with Val, who used to be, Val Tuck, who used to be in Canada Goose with myself, and tried that combination, and it, it just sort of clicked. Uh, I didn't really know James prior to the band, but from what I understand, he was doing a bit of folk stuff, and he was hanging around with like some of the guys from MRQ and bands like that. So he knew the musicians in Ottawa, and knew the music scene to a degree. But as for playing, to make a living or anything like that, I don't think he was doing that. He was just sort of feeling things out. Hmm. As Jimmy said, I think in one of his interviews, uh, denim wears well and everyone likes it. And we all wore denim. So it was basically an automatic, you know, like James Leroy and denim. I thought that was a joke because I thought like, that's so hokey it's never going to work but with what Dave was playing guitar wise and that it all came together again it's 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 how bands work it's it comes together and you put it on tape and you go oh wait a minute that works and if we change this a little bit but then on the record it worked really well so who was who was managing the band Harvey was yeah Harvey Glad yeah Harvey, I've been involved with Harvey over the years with a few bands, so it was an automatic thing. He, James had approached him to try and help him do something, so when the band evolved, Harvey sort of went into management. It seemed, he seemed to be on the scene, and um, I remember um, being impressed with him as a, uh, as a potentially good songwriter. Um, he was a good piano player and um, could sing, you know. And this is, um, of course, the era when Elton John was coming to prominence and I don't know how much, I guess some, uh, of what Jimmy was, was uh, due to Elton John influence. The album was produced by Adam Mitchell and Adam had been a member of the Poppers. And Adam had a lot of experience, and actually we all got along really, really well. All the artwork and everything for the album uh, was Bart Scholes, and he was a lot of fun. So it's the whole thing was, for a lot of the guys, a learning experience. I'd been in the studio a lot of times before, but for them it was like, oh wow, this is really, really cool. And it was a month of a whole lot of fun, and it was done at Manta in Toronto. Sometimes when I'm feeling down, got a feeling like a clown. Room, I think about what I got. Sometimes when people come on, just a little too strong, go to my room, I think about what I
did you guys have a sense of like it was getting bigger like the songs people were really connecting with the music the funny thing in that band is uh, never really did get that sense because it was either you're rehearsing a lot or playing a lot and every once in a while you'd like Jimmy would go do like the Elwood Glover show or things like that and I'd tag along once in a while and, and then you'd realize oh people are paying attention to us but other than that you, you were too busy doing doing it it was it was a job what precipitated the end of Venom uh, well really it was Dave quit first uh, and then I quit next and that was pretty much the end of that form of denim. Uh, the next reason, the next band, I'm not sure what the reason was. I just, like everything else, we'll just say it was conflicts of interest. Now, tell us something about Touch of Magic. Well, the, the song actually started uh, in the rehearsal hall at uh, the, the music store. And I was fooling around one day and I played backwards on the steel pick different because if you hear it live it's a totally different sound and it's like oh that's really neat and Jimmy is saying well I got this song and I said well how does it go let's see what we can so we worked out a rough arrangement and at the time it just sort of sat there it was like oh, that's a nice little song but I think it really came to life when it went to record Yeah, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about those days. Uh, you were so much a part of the history of uh, you know, the Ottawa music scene and the Canadian music scene, really, at that time. Thank you for asking me. It's our pleasure. Yeah.